last few years, I grew a small account where I was making a couple of hundred dollars per trade to now where I am making a couple of thousand dollars per trade. Let me walk you through the five steps you need to follow to do exactly what I did and a strategy that you can use that only takes 90 minutes a day to execute so you aren't spending hours and hours at a computer, you can go and live your life. The first thing to figure out is what brokers to use. This can 100% depend on where you are in the world, but go with the larger brokerages. The smaller ones can often be unregulated or trying to scam you in some way. And brokerages are so competitive now that the fees are practically the same across the board. And so going with the bigger ones is actually safer for you. The brokerage I use is called Ninja Trader, but if that isn't available in your area, the other great option that's available pretty much everywhere is TradingView. Now, when it comes to day trading, you can't day trade normal stocks if you have under $25,000 in your account. And that's a massive amount if you're trying to start small. There's a rule called the pattern day trading rule that says you can't have more than three trades in five days, which is if you're day trading, isn't a fun rule to try and deal with. But futures, which is another asset you can trade, doesn't have that rule you can start with an extremely small account and take as many trades as you want. Also, futures trade almost 24 seven, allowing you to trade any time of the day, no matter where you are. If you want a really detailed walkthrough of how futures work, I'll link my in-depth tutorial on that up here. As a basic thing is futures, I allow you to get a ton of leverage at around 450 X. If you're trading the S&P 500, this is why you can make really good returns with a small account. Of course, there's risk involved, but there are ways to protect yourself. You want to first figure out your risk tolerance. How much are you planning to risk per trade? I always say you should start initially with a simulated account because you want to figure out your strategy and everyone makes mistakes when they initially start out and mistakes in trading lose you money. But when you are ready, figure out how much you want to risk per trade. I currently risk about six to $700 per trade. But when I started out, it was way lower, like 50 or 100 per trade. Now, massive blunder that I made that I think lost me a couple years of successful trading was having a bad risk reward ratio. You need to figure out what kind of risk reward ratio you wanna go for. So when you're risking like $50 when you start out, how much profit are you targeting for every trade. There's a lot of information out there that has a strategy that they say, oh, this strategy has a 95% win rate. But when you look at their risk reward ratio, it's because they have a really bad risk reward ratio where they're risking something like $50 to make $25. And that might seem good initially, but when they lose, it's a big amount and takes out multiple wins. And I've realized over time, it's way better to have a positive risk reward ratio anywhere between one to one or one to three, where you're risking $100 to make $100 or risking $100 to make $300. This allows you to make more from your wins than losses. And even though your win rate won't be as high because to have a risk reward ratio like that, your trade has to go farther in your favor, the math will play out in the long run. And it allows you to make more from your wins and losses. And even though your win rate won't be as high, the impact of your losses won't easily blow up your account. And when you're starting out, that is everything. Success in trading is about staying alive when you're first starting out. And staying alive is not losing money and blowing up your account. When you're starting out, I'd suggest go for something super simple, like one to one or one to two risk reward ratio, where you're risking $100 and you're just going for $200 a win. Now, when it comes to safely growing your account, risk percentage per trade is really important. I would not risk more than 5% of your account on any single trade when you first start out, because this is again, is protecting you from potentially blowing up your account and getting washed out of trading, or having to put more money that you don't wanna put up into trading. I'd say it's best to not risk more than 5% of your account per trade, even when you start, but once you grow that size, reduce it because the actual money gets to be too big. Right now, I risk about two and a half percent of my account, but the dollar amount is now larger and I don't have the risk tolerance to deal with risking more dollar per trade. It's a balance between percentage but also the reality of how much the money affects you. When you're putting up, you know, $1,000 per trade, that's an insane amount of money. And it takes time 
to be okay with that and especially confidence when you first start out trading and so even when you start out fifty dollars might be a lot and so it takes time to grow that mental strength to deal with the volatility of trading i remember when i first started out betting a hundred dollars or 150 and taking that loss was really really impactful and now where i'm at that seems like a really small amount of money but it's about going through that growth phase and figuring out where you are in it everyone is at a different point start where it makes sense for you and grow from there now big thing with trading is growth there's a lot of poor ways to do this and a lot of bad information making you think that it might be really easy to grow a small account to hundreds of thousands in just one year. When it comes to trading, you have to think of it as percentage. The S&P 500 on average does seven to 9% a year, and that's really good gains. And so if you can trade and make something like 20% per year, that can be really insanely good too. Think about if you're trading a million dollar account and you make 20% return that year, that's $200,000. But if you then reduce that to $1,000, and you make 20% return, which is still really good, you're only making $200 that year, which seems like nothing and a complete waste of time. And so that's where trading is hard initially because you wanna make that return, but the real power of trading is that exponential growth and that ability to make massive amounts of money when you get to that point of having a really big account. Now, I started an account with $5,000 a couple years ago and I grew it 100% in that year, which is an insane return, but it's still only $5,000 that year. And so that's where you have to disconnect from trying to make a lot of money right away and instead focus on learning and mastering the strategy because it would still take you years of 100% gain per year to start making a large income that could potentially replace your full-time job. And it's unlikely those gains happen consistently and even making that 20% is still a massive impactful percentage when it comes to the reality of gains that you can have trading. And so the way to get around this is go into trading and building your small account with the plan of you are practicing and mastering your skills. It's not about the money right now. And over time, your account will grow. And when you are ready, you can add onto your account once your risk tolerance increases and you have shown consistent profits. Because if you start with as little as $500, even 100% growth every year, which is amazing, is gonna take you a decade to get anywhere reasonable. And now those percentages can't be just done over one trade. The idea is this is done over a ton of trades showing consistency. Anyone can get lucky with one trade. It's about showing consistency over the long run with a good amount of trades. I wouldn't consider adding on to your account until you're consistently over a whole trading year with real money. Then the second goal of this is to start to scale up your account so you can actually start making that impactful income you were looking for trading. You can even add more money to your account to increase your trading and risk size per trade and grow your account faster if you think the risk is worth it and you're confident in your abilities. But again, I wouldn't do this until being consistently profitable with real money on a smaller account because trading takes a long time to really prove that you're consistently profitable. You can be profitable for your first month, but you could have just got lucky. You need to prove that you can be profitable when the market is good and bad for your strategy. It's easy to make money when the market has good movement, but when all of a sudden it switches and you aren't experienced with dealing with that, it can catch you off guard and you can blow your account up really easily. Now, none of this matters if you do not have a strategy that you can consistently work on mastering every single day. Let me now walk you through the strategy that I've used for the last three years to grow a small account into a larger one. We're gonna go over three different sized trades throughout that process so I can show you the different steps you wanna be taking at each phase of the process. So over the years, I struggled a ton failed. with trying to find different strategies that worked, and I eventually realized that making it as simple as possible and trading only one strategy and pattern was way more successful for me. And so what I do is all I look for is key areas of resistance and support 
and I trade reversals off of them. So anytime the market comes up to a resistance level, I look for a couple key patterns and I bet the market's gonna go down and I make money as the market either goes down and then when it comes down to a support level, I close out of the trade or if I'm not in a trade, I look for the pattern to show up and then I make money as the market goes up. And so for me, I found this works way better and I'm able to take a small amount of risk and then profit a larger amount, having that really good risk reward ratio. And so this trade right here, this is with a tiny, tiny account. My risk on this trade right here is I think about $40 at the time. And so this is my stop loss up here. If the market comes up here and hits that, I will close out of the trade at a loss. And so this is a big thing when you're trading is you always wanna have a stop loss in place and you don't wanna ever move it farther away and increase your potential risk on the trade because that is a really, really good way to accidentally blow up your account and lose more money than you meant. Losses in trading happen. You just have to accept them and move on to the next trade. And so that's all I do every day. I go into the market and I look for reversal trades and it keeps it super simple. Sometimes a, a reversal trade doesn't show up, but that's totally okay. And again, I'm trading the MES futures here. If you wanna learn more about futures, check out that video that I linked. I traded this size for quite a while and slowly grew my account. You can see here, I'm up about $90 on this trade and I was risking about $40. And so that's about two and a half times my risk. And from there, I was able to close it out at about if I just zoom forwards, because this is a recording from a trade years ago, I closed it out at about $85 it looked like there. And so that was a really nice gain, especially if you're on like, let's say a 500 or a $1,000 account. That's a really, really good start to your growth. And so to jump forward in my trading, I was Order growing bill. that account. And now in this trade right here, I am risking about $150 and I'm going for that fixed risk reward. And so I'm going for 2X. And so if the market comes up to about here, I will make about $300. And so that's important when you first start out is go for a fixed risk reward ratio. It'll make it simpler on you because there's already so many things to figure out and focus on in trading. And so if you look at this trade right here, the main things, if we start to look at why I'm getting into these trades is I am just looking and reading the price action or the candlesticks of what's going on. And so I'm looking at the market is clearly in a downtrend right here, and it has some kind of big movement here, and then a big flush lower here. And you can see it comes down to this support level that I've previously drawn. And so again, we're looking at a one minute chart here. That's what I like to trade. You can trade this on really any market and time frame you want, because again, all you're looking at is reading the candlesticks of what they're telling you. But for this support level down here, I actually draw it on a 15 minute chart. The whole idea of looking at a larger time frame is if looking at a 15 minute chart here is looking at the key areas. All I like to look for in my support zones like this or resistance zones is I like to see the larger picture of where the market's bouncing. And so that's how I draw these levels is seeing that, okay, the market is bouncing, let's say here twice. And so I can draw this zone and see that, okay, well, if the market comes down here again, I can look for it to bounce there again, potentially. Now I'm not gonna go over the five key concepts of how I draw these support and resistance levels in this video, but you can check it out right here. And so with this trade, I just wait for the market to come down to one of these levels. And then I look for a couple of key factors. Of course, I always like to make sure that the downtrend is broken. And so you can see it had a really nice methodical downtrend here. It broke that. And then what is happening right here is I like to see is the market has made a very clean flush lower. And what happens in that case is it can think of it like a rubber band. Rubber band stretches and then it can snap back because there's that elasticity and force trying to pull it back to equilibrium. And so the market acts like that a lot and it can do that. And so when it does that down to a support level like this, like I've drawn, it's more likely to do that. The key that I really liked about getting in here is you can see the market basically made a double bottom. Is the market came down here, bounced. I don't like buying that first bounce because you don't know what's gonna happen. The market could bounce briefly and then just keep going lower. It's hard to trade reversals. And so you have to 
have a few key concepts. And so then I waited for it to bounce again. It had a really nice, strong bullish candlestick here. And then I jumped in the trade right here and I put my stop loss down here below the previous level where this support zone was drawn off of. And so that's how I used to look for these key areas and take trades off of. And you can see there, boom, I closed out at looks like about $350 on that trade. And that's a really nice win. And that's way larger than that $84 that I made in that last trade. And so this is how the growth happens over time. And so now jumping forwards, I'm risking even more per trade as this process continues. And so how you wanna be doing that is when you're risking, let's say $100, well, you can increase it to 150 because that's a 50% increase in size, that's really big. And then maybe you can go to 200 if you felt like that's still a big increase. And then maybe from 200, you can go to 300. And then 300, you can go to 400, 450. Mm -hmm. It's all about finding that balance of what works for you. And then as well, what you can start to do is you can start to change how you manage your trade. And so initially, you know, I would go for that fixed risk reward where I'd risk that $100 and I'd always go for that $200 of profit. Now I have realized over time that I can start to read the market a little bit better while I'm in a trade. And this is a skill that develops over time. Do learning to do this when you first start out, I would not recommend it. I would stick with keeping that fixed risk reward and then learning to manage over time because there's a it's very emotional when you're in a trade. It's it's a lot of pressure and a lot going on. And you know, seeing the candlesticks like this move and your dollar amount move up and down is very, very stressful. And so when the market goes against you, you know, it, it opens you up for making mistakes more than you could when you just leave it at that fixed risk reward ratio, because then you allow just the math to play out. But over time, I changed this. I said, you know what? I think I can do it now. I want to try this because I think that I can manage this and go for a more fluid risk reward where it's like, you know, sometimes I make two X on a trade. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's four or five. And so it, it opens you up for having a really a fixed amount where on this specific trade right here, I am risking, I think about $600 per trade. And this trade makes way more than that. It goes somewhere down here or even further off the screen, making me about 5X. That is a really, really big key when it comes to managing your trades and how you change your trading over time. But again, when it comes to my actual strategy, it's always remained the same. I always have a five step checklist and process that I go for in every single trade. So let me take you through that five step process right now. So you have a little bit more understanding. So first thing is always drawing that either support or resistance zone and just wait for the market to get there. And so looking at here, the market's come up here once, it's come down here, come up here, come down. And so I think there's a pretty clear area of support down here at the lows and resistance down here at the highs. And so when you, you know, just go to the right, you kind of wait for the market to come up into this resistance area again, and then you dive into a smaller time frame because again, this is on a 15 minute chart and you look for these few steps to bet the market's gonna go lower and capture a really nice risk reward ratio and get a good return on that trade. And so then I'll dive into a one minute chart and wait for the market to come up to that level. And so that's step one is just being patient and waiting for it to get to these key levels. Trust me, I've tried finding more levels looking at you know a one minute chart like this and being like oh well the market's bounced here bounced here maybe there's a support level there i'll take a trade i've lost money doing that more than i've made stick to the key levels it sucks being patient but just do it trust me it'll save you a lot of money and headache being patient and cherry picking for the best trades is really how you make money day trading you don't have to make a ton of trades every day to make money it's more about taking a small number of trades that are consistently profitable and so step two, again, is going back and looking at making sure that uptrend is broken. And so you can see here, I have this trend line drawn. I kind of drew it matching this low right here, this little pullback it had, and then even this little pullback it had here. And so, you know, it started to kind of break that line here, but I always like to go along with the rule of it needs to be clearly broken. And I would say it was clearly broken after this red candlestick closed and broke out of that. The next step in this 
is looking for a couple of patterns. And so I like to kind of think of trading as like a domino effect and kind of a big picture, medium picture, small picture. And so the big picture is looking at that 15 minute time frame and seeing where the bigger overall trend is and then going to a one minute chart and reading, okay, what is the smaller trend on the one minute? We need to wait for that to break. And then even smaller is looking at, okay, what is a pattern, a candlestick pattern that shows up when it gets to that level? And so in this case, what I see is the market has a lot of big momentum right here. Again, think about that rubber band effect we just talked about. These three candlesticks, if we kind of draw what happened there, is the market shot up here, and then over the next two candlesticks, it kind of sold off. And so to me, that is the market making an attempt to break higher and it being rejected. If the market was gonna have really a lot of strength here, I think it, it could have a little bit of a pullback here and, and then keep going. Or even here, it would pull back here and keep going and break out. But you can see here, it made a double top and then that attempt to break out right here actually stopped lower than this previous high right here. This is slightly lower than the last one if you look at those candle wicks and then it started to fail. And so exact same thing is it's that rubber band effect of it failing. If you just look over here, you can see the exact same thing happened is the market had a nice methodical trend going higher. You know, the candlesticks are about the same size. It starts to pick up speed. Boom, all of a sudden three big candlesticks over three minutes shoots the price higher. And then you can see there's some, it starts to go sideways. And then all of a sudden, boom, it goes back lower. That's exactly how the rubber band effect works. And so this is just kind of a smaller version of that. And having that coupled with what we're seeing here really helps of having it be at that level. The trend breaks after it makes this double top. And then the final thing I like to look for is that momentum start to switch. And so this right candlestick right here, this massive bearish one, that is a amazing indicator of, yeah, the, the momentum is clearly switching. The only problem with this size of candlestick is I like to put my stop loss of where I'll get out of the trade if it goes against me above that previous high right here. And if you see here, well, if you enter here and put your stop loss all the way up here, well, that makes your risk very, very big. And so you can still change how much you're risking. You can have a enter here and a stop loss here be $100 and you can have this stop loss right here be $100 as well. It just depends on how many shares or contracts or whatever market you're trading, you trade. You know, maybe you just trade one share here and it takes three over here. But the biggest thing with that is realizing that, well, if I enter here and my stop is here and I'm risking $100, to make $100, well, the market has to go all the way down here. Versus over here, well, if my risk is right here, well, to make $100, it just has to go right here and to make 200, it has to go here. And so, you know, if you compare that to over here, you're making about $300 when this trade over here makes only $100. And so that's something to keep in mind. Don't go after these. That's, I would say that's kind of chasing. And so you have to find a middle ground right here where you can see this is showing a nice rejection. And to show you exactly where I entered, the market made, you know, this double top and then these two bearish candlesticks breaking that downtrend. And so I put a buy order or technically a sell order right Where below that previous low of that candle. And so then the market broke that low. I thought that was just a nice, a nice little micro pattern, a breakout pattern to get in on. I got in, I got technically three contracts. And so here I'm, I'm shorting the market. I'm betting that the market goes lower. I make money as the market goes down. And so I put my stop loss up here, had a fixed amount of risk. And then from there, the I let the trade play out. And so now I have a more fluid management style. And so here you can see I moved my stop loss to break even. And so that if the market decides to come down here and, and go against me, I can get out without losing money. I've taken risk off the table. And so you see down here, there's a previous support level that I've drawn. And so that's something to be aware of, of, okay, we're getting down to the lows. You know, even though this isn't a big support level that I want to take a trade off of, well, the market's moving down so quick, it could bounce here. And you know, I'm up over three times my risk. You want to get out of your trade when you start to win and, and make a good amount of money, right? Because again, thinking about that rubber band effect, you don't want to have come down here and then snap back on you. And then all of a sudden the market moves really fast, some kind of news popped or something. And so at that point, you know, I start moving my stop down really quick and decide to close out. You know, I have this little downtrend here, but letting it come back all the way here, that's a massive amount of money. I would rather get out at, you know, about 5X 
and you can see now it's three thousand dollars per trade and so that's a lot of money that starts to mess with you even when you start to get used to it now this is just a simple tutorial quickly going through this i have just uploaded a complete master class that will take you from beginner to knowing everything you need to know about trading no video on youtube goes this in depth into building you the foundation for your trading success